Welcome back, everybody, to Sims Complete. I'm your host, Matt Sims, along with my other co-host, Phil Sims. And it's been a very oh. active off-season here so far in the NFL world. Again, the NFL world is just dominating uh, just everything that there is in sports right now. It doesn't even matter that's the off-season. It's still exciting. A lot of moves being made. But we're going to start today going back to this uh, quarterback draft class. We're going to talk about Joe Milton of the University of Tennessee, the volunteer and also Devin Leary, the journeyman who ended his career. At, well, actually, both these guys are journeymen, but ended his career at the University yeah. of Kentucky. Oops. And, uh, you know, excited to talk about these two QBs, Big Phil. But first of all, before we get started, how you doing, player? Hey, <laughs> player. I'm a player, all right. You are. Uh, I'm doing well. You know, look, I'm excited. Listen, we're kind of going down the board with these quarterbacks. And, you know, we want to – I think we should honor them all and talk a little bit about them, what we think. And uh, I think there'll be quite a few drafted. And, hey, it's good to talk about Joe Milton, Devin Leary here today. They could be anywhere from fourth round to seventh round to free agents. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I feel good about what I'm going to say about both these guys. How about you? Yeah, well, I, I think Brock Purdy has really kind of humbled us all, too, to now to, to not oh. overlook anyone, right? So, uh, yeah. you know, when we watched and did some of the breakdown for these two individual players, and even from my year at ESPN, just, you know, staying in tune with college football, uh, you know, Joe Milton and Devin Leary, you know, seem to pop up consistently. Why? Because they played in the SEC. And I feel like when you play quarterback in the SEC, uh, you're always going to be discussed and talked about and, you know, occasionally maybe over critiqued because of uh, of that conference. But at the same time, these guys have played against a lot of really good football players in that league. And they definitely have been battle tested. We're going to start with Joe Milton here and uh, Joe Milton journeyman himself. Uh, transferring from Michigan, going to the University of Tennessee. Only a one-year starter in his college right. career, even though he's been in college, you know, like a lot of these guys, he's been in college for a long time now with COVID, with the NIL, all that stuff. But, you know, your first impressions from Joe Millen and what you saw uh, from his film, because you got kind of excited when you saw some of his film. Yeah, I think him and Devin Larry both have been underrated as far as the writing. I read stuff online sometimes about them. And I just go, damn, that's not the guy I just watched. <laughs> uh, so, and, you know, it's so, I think so many people, I'm not going to say that, I don't mean to, this is not negative, but it's all about the statistics and how many games they won. And, you know, as I said in all the other shows, I'll say one more time, I'm judging him, the guy. I'm not judging his team, his coach, his teammates, anything like that. Uh, so, but uh, the first thing that jumps off right away when you watch Joe Milton it was better than I thought it was going to be. I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe, oh, this big guy who can run some, pretty good runner, but has a powerful arm. He's just going to throw all these balls down the field, and you know I'm probably going to just wash it away. But it was a little bit of the opposite. I thought he was much more accurate than I thought. It, uh, thought. He uh, plays extremely big. He can hang in the pocket, throw with – the first thing I'm watching, him play in Florida. Yeah. Florida gets a guy running free, is just going to wipe him out, hit him in the chest. He falls backwards as he's getting hit and throws a 30-yard strike down the field. And I said, okay, we're off to a good start here. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, the other things real quick, yeah, I think he throws the screens behind the line of scrimmage. I think, you know, I know it sounds so simple, but you and I know it's a little more than that. And I thought he did a really good job with that. And I told you about the stand in there. Um, uh, can take the hits and throw. I thought his decision making was good, maybe not great, but it was plenty good. And overall, just the other thing I like too that I always talk about throwing the ball deep down the field when you're throwing those go routes down the sideline. He throws them far, but he throws them really high too. And just think about the defensive back that's running with that receiver <laughs> down the field. Yeah. He's going, Where, where? I can't, but what? And then the ball's so high, and I talked to so many DBs about this over the years when I was doing games. It's panic time yeah. when the ball stays up near the line. Right. You know, the DB's going to panic, and I saw it tons of times. So that's just a few of my thoughts just to start. And um, as you can see, most of them are positive. Yeah, well, and it's exciting, too, because he is someone that I think has been uh, a, a little bit it, – it's either you, you like him or it's not at all, right? And, and I guess – what are what are like the few key things to you? Why for you as a as a GM of a football team, 
why are you intrigued late in the draft to find a quarterback like this, quarterback like this still available? What, what would be one of your main reasons why you're like, hey, let's take a chance oh, on this guy? Because the upside is is great. Right. He did beat out Hendon Hooker at Tennessee, but then Joe Milton went out there, and I think he got hurt in the second game the year before. So, so that says something. Right. Hendon Hooker had a great year and would have been drafted much higher than he was if he wasn't injured. But let's see Joe Milton, size, arm strength, can run, can stand in the pocket, red defenses. You know, it wasn't like he looked at one guy. He can look to the right and find the guy coming in from the left side. He did all that, I thought, you know, really well. He got to throw enough passes to get more experience, and he became a better passer as I watched games later in the year, if that makes yeah. sense. I think he finally got enough experience, enough throws, where he relaxed, and he became even a – I thought he was a – you know, good to really good short thrower. Right. You know, all the short routes, the out routes, the quickies, all that stuff. So so he's the guy I would want to draft in the fifth, sixth, or seventh because I'm not looking right now for a backup quarterback. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody that maybe can really jump and catch something special late in the draft. So right. just the physical traits alone, it would be enough for me, but, but also the play – I think gives me more more confidence too. Yeah, and he's he's a guy that, like I said, he started at Michigan. Now he finishes at Tennessee. He essentially had been in college for you know just about six years. And six years, yeah. With that though, doesn't doesn't have the accumulation of reps and stats the way that a Bo Nix, a Jaden Daniels, and some of the other guys that we've seen, you know, uh, right. and, and throughout his career. Does the lack of experience has that is that going to hinder him and the reason why he is a you know a fifth, sixth, or seventh round quarterback? Oh, sure, sure. It, it definitely will. And that's why, you know, look, I'm looking at him in, in just one way, that he's going to be a late round draft pick. And if I'm there and I just, I got, I feel pretty good about my quarterback situation. Right. I know we got the backup. I like our starter. I'm looking for the surprise, the gym. I'm not looking for God. Oh, he can call the plays in the huddle and get us in the right <laughs> formation. I don't give a crap. Can he throw? Can he run? Can he make plays? Right. But I love that one. He's going to be really good in the huddle. Bull well, I like he's good in the room too. You know. Yeah. Oh, he's great in the room. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> man, great in a room. That's a, that's so overrated. <laughs> uh, but yet the but the, again, I'm just trying to. Th well, I won't I won't name other quarterbacks who had successful careers, who had lots of experience, and but they lack a physical trait that's going to give them a chance to be a good NFL quarterback. Right. That's my big thing. Yeah. What trait is going to make him good? Well, don't give me this, well, he's just smart. He just knows how to play. Yeah. I need more than he's that. He's just a winner. <laughs> I, yeah, he's a winner. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, nobody wins at Oklahoma or, you know, Alabama. It's, uh, <laughs> so. But what do you think? What else do you got to say about Joe? Yeah, well, I, I want to go back to this, too. You know, I feel like just paying attention to him uh, specifically as the player, the individual, and, and even something that I think Tennessee could have maybe have done a little bit more for him is utilize his athleticism. I, I do think that he is a little underrated yes. as an athlete, as a mover, as a runner. And that's where I think that experience factor is big for him. I think if he yeah. had a few more reps and games under his belt, we would have saw some of those plays and that ability from him more naturally in football games. As the year went, like you mentioned, you started to see that Tennessee had those designed runs, you know, those little check with these where it's like either throw the screen or run the quarterback draw, right? Or even just right. him naturally scrambling and getting yards. Uh, there was a few games where you can see he's out running people, you know, getting to the outside and running for long touchdowns. So this is something to me that we didn't see enough of it throughout his entire career. We know that he's capable of it. And now the question yes. is, you know, in an NFL locker room, you know, with an NFL scheme and offense, can he continue to tap into that ability? Because we've seen how important that is. Um, so his athleticism to me is very underrated and is definitely one of those things that right now we haven't really seen exactly what it can be at the next level, which I think, you know, in some cases, his athleticism, I think, transfers to the NFL level very well. Yeah, I'll say this. Um, it's up to him. Yeah. You know he is raw. There is a he has to go upward in what what he's doing as a quarterback, yeah. and he's just going to have to be tough and work hard. And you're going to have to do a lot of it on your own, right? Because you know the NFL teams they're paying attention to the starter and they're working the second guy. But after that, 
man, you just got to be yeah. a sponge, listen, work hard, go out on the field when practice is over, and keep trying to truly elevate who you are as a quarterback, as an athlete, as a passer, as a thrower, all those things. I'll say this too. I'm going to get this off my chest, Matt, <laughs> um, real quick. The combine. Yeah. Okay. Right. You're Joe Milton. Okay. We we know it. Hey, he looks great. He's got everything you want, and he's got a really strong arm. So let's try and throw with touch. What the hell was that? Yeah. Don't show him the, the incredible arm strength on the. So you know the first I don't know how many throws I almost turned it off. He's throwing them out there real soft. I'm going, who is this? What? Why would you do that? Yeah. Show off your greatest skill at the combine. Right. I, all, all of them. One, none of them can drop worth a damn. That's amazing. <laughs> you, you go to camps, you're paying guys money, and we drop back like we're dropping on ice. Yeah. And, oh, I don't want quiet feet. I want loud, aggressive, you know, feet that are going to help me get in position to do what? To throw that damn ball either soft or throw it with great power. Yeah, you want, you want so, to see their athleticism displayed, right, with their drop, getting back from center. Because, absolutely. You know, these guys, they're – they're not tiptoeing quietly back there when the game starts, right? I mean, you're you're essentially you're, you're getting back there pretty aggressively, you know, behind that NFL line of scrimmage, especially if you are under center. Even though a lot of guys, you know, in offenses that aren't aren't keen on that drop back from under center often, but you want to see that athleticism and, and that transfer of ability from under center to the throw. And you're right. I think Joe should have just doubled down on what he's great at and really just showed. I am the alpha dog as far as throwing power throws, throwing to the sideline, throwing it down the field. He did that on the go ball, that's for sure. He kind of sat on the one go ball and bombed it. And I I, I honestly would have advised him to to triple hitch it and just throw it as far as you damn well could have in that situation. But um, I do do agree. I think that's where J.J. impressed a lot of people. Even though he wasn't perfectly accurate on every throw, he cut it loose and he showed – that he had tremendous power and arm power and width uh, to his yeah. motion. And I think that excited a lot of people when they saw that in person compared to the other quarterbacks. Yeah, it, it caught my attention. Yeah. Even the ones he missed, you know, I, oh, oh, it, it's not about completing the pass. I, I think they get caught, the, the, you know, I'm talking about the out route to the left. Yeah, right. And right. it's just not a, as far a throw as you think. Just drive it right at them the whole way. Yeah. But the ones, most of them missed high. Because I think they just misjudged how easy of a throw it was. Yeah, right. And yeah, so you know that that's well, and, it and, always... and that's why the combine's funny though too. Because uh, you know, even even the announcers at times, you know, who we respect and all the work that they put into it, of course, right. But just you know, ooh, he missed that one behind. Oh, that was a good miss. I I, I have a tough time deciding. Uh, you know, sometimes when they when they decipher what a good miss and a bad miss is at the combine, but. You know, it's just uh, it's whatever they choose it to be for that particular rep or who is actually throwing the football. But, uh, you know, Joe Millen, I think, is he's a project. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Final thoughts real quick, though. You know, his motion and his mechanics and kind of how he goes about throwing from the pocket. Now, I will say this quickly. Don't think that he was a great thrower on the run or as good of a thrower on the run as someone as talented as he is. And I think that's because his arm gets a little too – uh, it, it almost has a mind of its own. He doesn't he doesn't stay connected with his body enough when he's throwing on the run. Now in the pocket, uh, certain throws, the Florida example, like you mentioned, you see that he does have that ability to really stay connected oh. with the arm and have that whip action with his arm connected to his core. Whereas in other times, I feel like it's very, you know, it's a little too handsy of a motion. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Time will take care of that. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. It doesn't take much. Right. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some examples of this later. But if you really want to be a true NFL quarterback that has a chance to start, and if you get that chance that you can get it done, then it, it just takes work. And you got to figure it out yourself, too. Right. You know, you can't always have somebody standing there. So figure it out for yourself. That'll be interesting to see if he does. Um, it seems like he's very dedicated to making this work. I saw him when he was at Michigan, and I thought, ooh, this looks pretty good. Yeah. Then he would throw the ball, and I go, he throws it so hard, nobody can catch it. <laughs> and I'm, like, serious. Right. And that, that was kind of the end there, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, but, yeah, he, he's worth the risk. Uh, that's why I wanted to bring him up and talk with him about to you. Right. Just to 
I, I was a little surprised yeah. when I watched the film that he's just got more potential than I thought just trying to watch him during the year occasionally here and there. So, yeah, and a part uh, of that too really is the fact that Tennessee exceeded ex- expectations the year before. They had this fantastic year. They beat Alabama at home. Right. Everyone goes crazy. They're basically on the road to a potential you know playoff berth and national championship. And you know it, it's just kind of hard to fill in the shoes of a team that – you know, was really built perfectly for that specific year. And then, right. you know, was missing a few pieces the following year to kind of make that same exact run again. And that really isn't, you know, on the quarterback there. Uh, but again, plays one of the positions where it's easy to kind of put the blame at the quarterback. But uh, Joe Mellon's Well, it depends. Of, it, yeah. It, yeah. No, I'll say this. Yeah. Blame the quarterback or make an excuse for him because he doesn't have the same guys he had from last year. Right. Right? right. And and like I always say, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I just, it, it means that, that doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. If you play for the Arizona Cardinals, you're not going to probably, uh, your quarterback's probably not going to put up the numbers the quarterback does in San Francisco because the opportunities are more, they have more, they, it's, it's better, it's easier, whatever you want to say. Yeah. So uh, the same thing happens in college too. No doubt. So let's go on to Devin Leary. Let's get to Devin Leary. Kentucky. Hey, Kentucky, yeah, Kentucky. But hey, he's a Jersey boy now. He's a Jersey boy. I know. I know. Well, he, let me tell you, he's Jersey tough. <laughs> Holy shit. He's yeah, go ahead and elaborate on that. Yeah. So, oh, he's just tough. I mean, he was 6'1, 217. He, yeah, go ahead. And he, he looks, he looks bigger than on, on the, on the field. Right. You know, he looks, he looks big. He looks like I would have said 225. Okay. I mean, he's not afraid to take a hit. His ass can stand in there, and he's looking for the big throw. Right. To hell with the check down. I'm going to hold it <laughs> and try to smoke an in cut, a, a corner route, goes. I mean, I think I was like, I was just having fun watching him going, another big throw. Yeah. Ah, you know, you could have thrown the out cut for 15, but you tried to rip a 40-yarder, and, you know, it was it was hilarious to watch. It really was. I Again, I said, let me just watch him. I've heard really nothing good except he's got a good arm at the combine. Right. And uh, as I started watching him, I go, hey, this is an interesting guy. This is a guy that has some traits that gives him a chance in the NFL. Right. I think he's more mobile than I – you know, I read some of these evaluators because I'm just starting, and I read their comments, and and then I watch him and just go, sorry, I almost knocked my headphone out. Uh, he's a little more mobile than I thought, moves around to throw it, buys time can throw under pressure. And I'll tell you, Matt, um, I thought his arm, it's NFL, it's a way, it's it's above NFL average. Mm. You know, that's how I kind of usually judge it. Right. NFL average plus, whatever. And I gave him a big plus on the other side. He can really make the big throws down the field with power. And I thought he was more accurate than he got. He was given credit for too. Uh, you definitely see right away, just uh, you know, from from watching the games this season, that the dude definitely has the ability to push the football sideline to sideline yeah. and down the field. Right? I mean, you know, there's no doubt about that. Guy's got guy's got a strong arm. I do think that, like similar to Joe Millen, both of them occasionally they get a little too uh, lax with their arm, right? It, especially with Devin, I feel like his arm length got a little too aggressive at times, and that's why. You know, you see the ball flutter away from him a few times on throws yeah, where yeah. you would expect him to make that throw. But I think he's just throwing – he's almost got the Baker Mayfield syndrome. He's just trying to throw it so damn hard that he loses control of the football occasionally. Um, decision-wise, though, what, what did you think? Because I thought he's a pretty good decision-maker for the most part. And, again, North Carolina stayed for four years, Kentucky for his last year. So, you know, right. new offense, all that kind of stuff. But – Overall, I thought his decision-making process was, was pretty solid. Yeah, I watched him. Uh, yes, I think his decision-making was solid. Uh, yeah, and I think you made a great point. He really gets a kick out of throwing it hard. I mean, it's, you know, he's he at Baker Mayfield was the great example. Because Baker, even this past year, as good as he played, there were like three plays a game. I should have saved it for later. Three Where he just throws it so damn hard, it's just not going to be complete, right. you know. But um, uh, what was but, I going to say that, about that? That is a quality but, that you, as an evaluator, myself, and I think a lot of other people in the NFL too, uh, depending on the offense that you play in and coach and all that, you, you do value that type of ability to have that right to yes, to aggressively fit it into tight windows, you know, in crunch time situations. This is why Baker Mayfield, to me, 
you know, is one of those polarizing players too, that, you know, just not a lot of people appreciate how physical he is on the football field for an undersized guy, how strong he could throw it down the field. And Devin Leary kind of shows that ability. He also kind of, here's another little comp with Devin Leary. I, I almost saw like a little Gardner Minshew oh, aspect yeah. to him too, you know, where it's like, yes. ooh, this is ugly. This is ugly. Oh, that was a good play, you know. So, uh, you know, I think that's a, that's also a, a good trait to have, especially if you are a backup or third-string quarterback because, you know, we know very well, right, that the late games and preseasons, I know that all too well, is uh, just – they're kind of disasters. They really are. Right. You know, I mean, I had right. one time where I was dropping back in a preseason game and uh, our four string tight end was my right tackle once. So oh, that kind of just shows you that uh, stuff happens in these preseason games. And I think Devin has that ability to be a great playmaker and improviser and will really thrive kind of in that environment as he gets more experience. Yeah. Last thing I'll say about him is this. He's not a check down, Charlie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. He's not worried about his completion percentage. He's trying to execute the play that is called. And if you forced him, yeah, he would get rid of it short. But most of the time, he was trying to drive it down the field. Uh, we talked about how tough he is in the pocket. I think the other thing is the whole field is wide open to him. In other words, it doesn't matter where you are. I think he was playing Tennessee when I, I saw this play. You know, the, the, the hashes in college football are much wider than the NFL. He was on the right hash, caught the ball, did the drop and whatever, and he threw a 12-yard speed out all the way to the left sideline. And I, the corner looked like he was going to get the break on it, but he threw it so hard, <laughs> he got it right by yeah. him. And, you know, which is – that's – you know, that used to be the the mark of NFL quarterbacks. Can you throw that out cut right. and hit the sidelines? And we don't see as many sideline throws as we used to, but uh, it kind of came back this past year. So it's another thing he has in his um, his uh, repertoire, whatever you want to say, yeah. and his ability to do that. So it'll be interesting. I would think, he, of course, last thing is he will be a late round, late round pick. Right. I would think he could be a free agent. Yeah, high priority but free agent. He's going to go into training camp or practice as no TAs, and I think that skill of throwing the football, you know, you want to make that great first impression. It is. It's real. Right. And he goes out in the field, and everybody's going to come in after and go. Damn, I didn't know he had this good of an arm. Right. Yeah. And so that that's on his side, and and he's gonna have to, of course, uh perfect it even more. And we always say when you're in the NFL, if you make it one year as a quarterback, if you come back the next year, you're not throwing it better, then I don't know what to tell you. Goodbye. Yeah. And, you know, and this is a guy, just, too, that's, you know, five years again, like we said, the first four at North Carolina State. Difference between him and Joe Milton is the fact that, you know, he has accumulated a lot of reps and experience. And, right, and really the highlight, you know, of his career was in 2021 uh, where he completed 65% of his passes, threw for 3,400 yards and had 35 TDs and five interceptions. So, you know, I think a lot of teams when they're evaluating, they'll kind of look back through his history and see that there is – there's a lot to like about his playmaking. And there, there was even some talk, you know, in that 2001 time frame uh, you know, like yeah. like a lot of other quarterbacks really through the years where he was in that consideration of a early first, second, third round discussion. You know, and of course, just college football and the life of football, you know, it, it's tough sometimes with the environment that you're in to kind of continue to be successful. Uh, North Carolina, you know, made some changes. They kind of, you know, essentially asked him to leave, right? He had to go and, and basically start sure. anew. But He's yep. got a lot of reps, a lot of experience. He's battled through injury, been through been through this adversity, and and has really proven that he has he has a skill set that applies to the NFL. And I think yes. it will be very intriguing for some teams late in this year's NFL draft. So that's all we got yeah. for. No, let me let me clear okay, this up ahead. real yeah, quick. Go ahead. This is this is easy. When you we talk about the throwing, you know, you we you mentioned it, and I do too. When the arm gets long and. Um, it's real. The longer your arm gets, the weaker you're probably going to throw the football. So compact. It's like all we we, you, we always refer to it this way. If you're going to punch somebody, do you swing your arm way out and try to hit them? No. You go right at them and you rip through it. Right. And it's the same as throwing. So for everybody's, oh, what do you mean his arm is long? Or keep it a compact it gives you more power, which sometimes it's hard to believe in your head. But it, it's a fact. Yeah. Trust me. No, it is. It is. Uh, so, right. you know, really – 
you know, we'll see what happens with these two guys. Uh, you know, definitely two quarterbacks that we'll be keeping an eye on throughout, you know, their their careers here early on with the draft process. And obviously this year coming up in preseason uh, should be exciting time for them. That's all we got, Sims Complete fans, for uh, another edition of the quarterback breakdown here in the 2024 NFL Draft. Uh, I am your host, Matt Sims, along the big effer, Phil Sims. And check out some more stuff of us on Believe Network and also at the Sims Complete YouTube page. You can follow Big Phil at at Phil Sims. Uh, what is it? At Phil Sims QB on Twitter, at Phil Sims QB on Instagram. And I'm just Sims Complete on all of those, man. So just like, subscribe, okay. check us out on the Believe Network and Sims Complete YouTube page. And we'll see you next time for more quarterback breakdown.